Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. When you want, go to the local grocery store. Mm -hmm. Who owns this? The government. government What nation of people rules this government? I just, I just want y'all to think. The That's all. Not I just want you to think. That's it. When you go to your local grocery stores, whatever name you want to put on it, who owns those? Who makes sure that the, 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 the distribution of those, those pro products get shipped to this grocery store? Who owns that? Who owns the the, the, the shipping contain, containers, that whether they come from boat or a train or whether they come from a semi-truck, who owns that to bring it to the grocery store? Who owns the, the land that it grows on? What is that talk? What is that thing? What do you think, man? Okay. All of them. The whole world. Okay. And they. And they. What have we been talking about, Ruby? The things that are happening to us. The oh, things that have been happening to us. Yeah. Yeah. The that's curses. The, yeah, that's the, the bad things. Mm -hmm. And they. These bad things are going to be what? Upon, Upon thee mm -hmm. for a sign. They're going to be on us for a sign. I didn't know that this place was Marquette uh, Village until I saw what? The sign. A sign. Yeah, the sign. So these bad things are happening to us as a sign to let us know who we are and what we need to do to get out of these conditions. That's what these signs are for. Because if you are having a headache, isn't that a sign? To do what? Maybe drink some water. Take medication. Maybe to go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Maybe to take some medicine. medicine. Right. But it's a sign to let you know that you need to do something. It's a symptom. So we can't ignore these signs anymore now. Now that these signs are being shown to us, we can no longer ignore them. So read, read that again, 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. And for a wonder. And for a wonder. It's for you to be like, man, remember? Man, why do we always go through this? I remember at one point when Trayvon Martin, um, uh, the brother uh, in St. Louis, uh, yeah, Mike Brown. Mike Brown, when they when they got going through, I used, I was like, man, why does this keep happening to us? Because there was countless brothers and sisters prior to them that kept getting killed by the police, and, and they was getting away with it. I'm like, man, why is this going on? Why is this happening? I, used, I was wondering. So I started doing research. Uh -huh. And it led me to what I'm doing right now. It's still happening. It's still happening. That's why we're here. Okay. Because we need your help to help stop it. Not only are we, we're not just coming here. We're going to the schools. We're going into the streets. We're going into the churches. We're going everywhere to try to get this message out so we can put an end to this. So that God could show more favor to us. Because he said, and they, these bad things are going to be upon us for a sign and for a wonder. And upon thy seed mm -hmm. forever. Mean upon our children yeah, forever. Children. Yeah. That, every, generation. every generation this is going to keep happening. So we have a responsibility to do it. Okay. We have to be like, you know what? What he's enough saying makes enough. sense. Enough is enough. enough, is enough. On, I have to do something. Give me 37. Verse 37. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a bright byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. So that word astonishment popped up again. It says, 
go back. And thou, meaning the nation of Israel, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you're going to become an astonishment, meaning the nations are going to look at you and make a mockery of you. They're going to actually make a market to mock you some more. They're going to give certain people contracts to live out this lifestyle because we know without an image, a positive image for you to live, you're going to follow this negative image and you're going to try to mimic it. And now you're going to be an astonishment. It says, and thou should become an astonishment, a proverb. Mm -hmm. What does that mean, Ruby? Mm -hmm. When you become a proverb. Okay. It's, I'm a, it's a word. I mean, it's just a word. I know you're going to get it. I'm going to shift over here to Dallas. What is a proverb? Oh, okay. So give me one. Give me one. Give me an acknowledge of words of wisdom. Give me one. Give me one that's out there. Okay. Okay. You warming up? All right. Now, Ruben, you heard what he said? So I know, I know it, it's something clicked. I'm just saying the old proverb. Mine is a Okay. I'm going to ask one of you ladies back here. What is it talking about when it says, and thou shall become a proverb? Okay, I like that. But what does that mean? <clears throat> it, it means that there is no time for truth uh, to rise, but it will come back okay. at some point. So that's a good proverb. God is talking about a bad proverb right here. So what is a bad proverb that is describing us as a people? Okay. In the beginning. Okay. You know what I'm saying? All right, I got you. All right, so I'm going I'm to give, give the answer. Okay. Or give an example. Okay. Whoever heard of, if you want to hide something from a nigga, put it in a what? Book. Mm -hmm. In a book. That's a proverb. Oh. That's a proverb to pretty much identify okay. us as a people. Yeah, our culture. Our culture. Our it's heritage. Not true. It's not true, but the nations or the people outside of our community, this yeah. is what they say. And that's how they think. They always eat chicken. Yeah, fried chicken. Oh, that's okay. yeah. The black man don't take care of his kids. Yeah. He don't love his woman. Mm -hmm. These are proverbs. But, unfortunately, that's some of them are true. Some of them are. That's all mine. They're, you know what? They're true to the point because the 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 environment that we live in, mm -hmm. it forces us to live like that. Because when you look at the youth today, their fathers are not in the house. That's true. They don't even know who they are. Yeah. And they don't read. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't even, most of the youth today in our community don't have a fourth grade education. Mm -hmm. So when you look at even today, look how we dress. Mm -hmm. That's a proverb. This style of dress came from jail for the penitentiaries. This is homosexual behavior. Advertising. Yeah, you're advertising your butt out. Yeah. So this is an astonishment. So, go back to the scripture. It says, and thou shall become an astonishment, a proverb, read, and a byword. What is a byword? Y'all said it earlier. Children, no matter 
you know, we may not have the same mother and the father, but we still Christians. We're supposed to walk together, help one another, and don't be, you know, don't be so evil and don't be so mean and cruel to people. Colleen, I like what you just said. Uh-huh. And be, be together, you know, we can help somebody. Let me ask you a question. What's your nationality? I'm, I'm, I'm just a plain, regular Negro person. But I You're just, a who? I'm just a, a plain, 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 plain Negro person. Plain I Negro person. The way they're supposed to be treated. Okay, you Can, know? I'm going to ask her, what's your nationality? Black. Black? What's yours, ma'am? Negro. Negro? Mm-hmm. I didn't ask you. What's your nationality? Black. Black. All right. So, this is what the byword is going into. When we give ourselves or if we're being told who we are, that's a byword. Because you look, we didn't ask this question to hundreds of people. I didn't heard some of your answers. I didn't heard I'm a Christian. I didn't heard I'm a vice lord. I'm a pimp. I done heard all of these things. But these are things that are being taught to us by the environment that we live in that has been created by who? The, 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 the environment, the culture. But who created this environment? Well, you know what? I disagree with saying who uh, who created it because we're always saying the white man created it. Uh, okay. He did not create it. Your mind, he can't change. Okay. Is, I mean, if, you, if, your mind, if your heart is there, he can't change it. Only God can change it. Okay. All right, so, so, so only so God can change it, right? Only God. Read verse 15. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now go to verse 48. Verse 48. So we're going to see who, who essentially created this. Because you made a good point, Ruby. Because it's coming from us, actually. Uh-huh. If we change, the environment changes. Absolutely. So essentially, it's all on us. It's on us. Because right. if we don't follow God, Absolutely. we're going to continue on in this cycle of yes. sin and this cycle of oppression. Uh, depression, whatever you want to call it. But if we do what God says, we can break the curse. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes. So. A byword is you calling yourself outside of what God calls you. Mm-hmm. God calls you an Israelite. Mm-hmm. And you know what tribe you're from based off your father's lineage. So if he's from the tribe of Ephraim, then you will be called an Israelite from the tribe of Ephraim. You see what I'm saying? If you're from the tribe of, of a, a so-called African American, because it, uh, Ephraim is a so-called Puerto Rican. A so-called African American is from the tribe of Judah, the same tribe that Christ was from. You'll be from the tribe of Judah, from the nation of Israel. So this environment was basically created by God because of our disobedience. And he just used people to make it happen. He used these vessels. Just like he uses us to get things corrected. He used other people to disrupt things. So read verse 48. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 48. Mm -hmm. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. Let's start at verse 47 since the slide is right here. Verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Because everyone in here, y'all love God, right? You love Jesus, right? Yes. Do Do you think you serve him with joyfulness? gladness of heart and the abundance of all things everyone would say yes right but is that actually true no no it ain't true you gotta ask yourself and, and be honest yeah absolutely because some of us aren't doing what God says that's serving him is when you do what he says obey his commandments you can't say oh I love you Jesus but then go outside and smoke a cigarette <laughs> All right, or kill somebody. You're not serving the God with joyfulness right. and gladness. Right, the God of heaven. In the abundance of all things at that point. Because if you treat, if I treat you wrong, who am I treating wrong to? I'm treating God wrong. I'm, if I treat you wrong, I'm treating Christ the same way. Because we both belong to him. Exactly. 
So this is a heavy scripture. It says, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness. So if I'm treating you wrong, Ruby, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not applying it. So read verse 48. This is very important for us to understand verse 48 because we all say that we're, when I asked you what's your nationality, we gave different answers. So this is going to really bring it in when you start to understand who you are. Because this didn't happen to no other people on earth but us. Read 48. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 48. Mm -hmm. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. Wait a minute, who's going to send them against us? Which the Lord shall send against uh -huh. thee in hunger. In hunger. And then thirst. Uh -huh. And then nakedness. Uh -huh. And then want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So this enemy was going to put a yoke of iron on our neck. Everybody has a flyer? I have a flyer. Okay, I want you to look at that flyer. The, the front page of that flyer. I want you to look at this flyer, and I want you to look at the yokes of iron. The yokes of iron. Read it again. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies. Keep that image up there. Keep that image up there. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Uh -huh. In hunger. In and hunger. In and so, thirst. So, read it again from the top. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies. So God said you're going to have to serve your enemies. I mean, you're going to have to be in subjection to your enemies. You're going to have to work for your enemies. You're going to have to do what they tell you to do. You're going to have to celebrate the holidays. You're going to have to have their names. You're going to have to adapt to the nationality that they give you. But he also says you're going to have to serve them for what? Which the Lord shall send against thee uh -huh. in hunger. In hunger. When you want something to eat. Yeah, when you're you hungry. Feed, you gotta feed them. Who do you go to to get that to get that hunger to go away? When you want food, who do you gotta go to? Colleen? Mm -hmm. God said you gotta go to your enemies. enemies. Love and love your enemies, love you love yourself. Now listen, Colleen. Uh -huh. When you want something to eat, you gotta go to your enemies. enemies. Read on. Oh. Snacks. Anybody anybody familiar with food stamps? Yeah, that's food stamps. That's nasty. Isn't it a lot of our people getting this? Government, yeah. Government. Government. When you want, go to the local grocery store. Mm -hmm. Who owns this? Who, the government. The government owns that. Mm -hmm. All of that. All what of nation that. of people rules this government? I just, I just want y'all to think. The That's all. Not a color. I just want you to think. That's it. Yeah. When you go to your local grocery stores, whatever name you want to put on it, who owns those? Who makes sure that the, 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 the distribution of those, those pro products get shipped to this grocery store? Who owns that? Who owns the... The, the, the shipping contain, container, that whether it come from boat or train or whether it come from a semi-truck, who owns that to bring it to the grocery store? Who owns the, the land that it grows on? God owns all of this. I'm, I'm just saying, God owns all of it. Mm -hmm. All of it. He owns but all of it. the government is controlling most of it. Okay. And now, I want you, I want you, to, listen, I want you to listen to something. Because remember, the Bible says... You're, and you have to go to your enemies to get this. Is God our enemy? Not at no. all. No. The no, folks with nine colors are our enemy. God, yes, he's in the he's the master controller. No. But remember, no. God said, if you do what I tell you to do, you're gonna be blessed. But if you don't, curse is gonna come on you. So us having to be subjected to live like this mm -hmm. is a curse. Mm -hmm. So water, doesn't that freely come out of the sky? But collect it and try to filterize it and drink it or sell it and watch what happens. You get locked up. The IRS coming after you and everything. So read 48 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 48. Listen real closely, y'all. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies. Therefore, therefore, therefore. Because you don't want to serve God, therefore... You gotta now serve your enemies now. Read. 
Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, uh -huh. which the Lord shall send against thee uh -huh. in hunger uh -huh. and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. Of all things. Mm -hmm. If you want heat, this heat. What will happen if the heat bill don't get paid? If you want to go to the, get your social security card, mm -hmm. you got to go to your enemy for that. Mm -hmm. If you want to go to the doctor, you got to go to your enemy for that. Mm -hmm. Everything. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we didn't want to serve the Lord our God. Now, you could, you could decide to serve God today, mm -hmm. but this curse is still going to be going on. Yeah. It's still going to be going on. It's going to continue to happen until Christ comes back. So we have to continue on practicing keeping God's laws until he comes back. That's it. And doing them. So the yokes of iron that's on our necks, that's a clear key sign to let us know that we are who? Who are we? We are the children of Israel. How do we get over here to the shores of America? How do we get here? What mode of transportation? Slave ship. Did y'all know that was in the Bible? That's recorded in the Bible. We're about to read it. We're about to read it. Give me that slide. Go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Okay, so when we came out of Egypt, how did we get out of Egypt, Dallas? Did we fly? Did we drive a car? We walked, right? So Egypt and Israel, is, they're close, right? We didn't have to take no plane to get there. We literally, we walked. We walked. So Egypt is synonymous for captivity or slavery. Give me that in Exodus. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. So Egypt and bondage are synonymous with one another. So the children of Israel, when they hear the word Egypt, they automatically know bondage. Just like when you tell your kids, oh, you're going to get in trouble. They already automatically equated that to a whooping. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're going to get it when your daddy get home. They already know what's about to happen. That's exactly what God is, is saying when he said, look, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. We didn't believe it back then, though, obviously, because we came here on the shores of America, on slave ships. Mm -hmm. yeah. These are the slave ships. Mm -hmm. They put us on there. And these are cargoes. These, these ships weren't made for humans to be on. Right. But look how they had to put us on there. Pack us in there. To get thousands and thousands and thousands, five or six of these ships coming at one time. Some going to Brazil. Some going to Central America. Mm -hmm. Some going to America. Some going to Europe, some going to Australia, some going to Canada. So the only difference between us and Hispanics is the, where the ship got dropped off at. That's the only difference. And then over a course of time, of course, some of the Hispanics, they assimilated and, you know, they mixed. So now their skin tone changed, their hair texture has changed. But we're all the same people because of these curses that are assigned to let us know who we are. So this Bible that has been sitting in our rooms forever is our actual records. It's our history book. And it gives us laws that we're supposed to live by and follow. Yeah. And follow yeah. Not to break, because yeah. if we do break, we're going to keep this up. This is why things is happening out there. Yes. Yes, sir. So once we understand that as, as adults, mm -hmm. we can now start to teach change. our children better. Change. Make a change. Now, is everyone going to agree to this? Is yes. everyone going yes. to be like, man, you know what, you're right? No, everyone isn't. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Some is going to get it, some is not. When Christ walked the earth, everyone didn't get it. Amen. Some got it, some didn't. Yes. So finish 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again uh -huh. with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. So we won't go see the land of Egypt no more. We won't go see the land of Egypt no more. We never went back into the land of Egypt. He said, we're not going to see it no more. But this new land is called spiritual Egypt. Give me Revelation. 11 and 8. This is called spiritual Egypt. Why? Because we came into slavery here just like we was in the landmass of Egypt. Revelation 11 and 8. The book of this Revelation. Is, this is just a sidebar to get you to understand what Egypt is talking about. Read it. And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets. Now, when the Bible says their dead bodies, it's not talking about physical dead bodies. It's talking about us spiritually dead because we are cut off from knowing who we are. We don't even know that we're supposed to be keeping God's laws. Uh -huh. We don't know that. I'm going to tell you why. Really? In some of these churches, they tell you God's laws is done away with. Oh, wow. Anybody ever heard that before? You never heard that? <clears throat> Not well. What's today? <laughs> Saturday. Saturday. The Sabbath. Today is the Sabbath day. Today is the Sabbath day. My kids, uh, me and my two kids, we had got baptized on the Sabbath day mm -hmm. on 71st Street. The name is Earl Pastor Cox. And then my kids, they started getting sick, and my daughter, she got ill. Sorry that happened. Uh, something that happened. So I lost all my family. Right. But you know what? I'm still here. But, but I kept that the blue. This is your family now. And this is all my family. And I'm thanking and praising God for each and everything in my yeah. life. To have God in my life and to have people in my life. Right. But do what you're supposed to do. Stay to yourself. Mind your business. And see, God will take care of you. You know, God will send you friends and neighbors to help you. Okay, Colleen. Okay, thank based, you so much. Based off what you just said. Read that one more time. Six, eight. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again uh -huh. with ships. Mm -hmm. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. So the Bible says once we got off the slave ships, there you will be sold. Go back. You will be sold to your who? I now go back to that slide. The picture. This is what we were sold. This is how we were sold on auction block. Who know about Wall Street? Oh yeah. In New York. Did you know that that was an auction? Yes, it was. We were sold. We were the first commodity sold on the on Wall Street. We were commodities. This is what happened to us. It says, to be sold on Wednesday, the 10th day of May, a choice cargo of 250 Negroes. Who said that they was a Negro? That's what you I said, Carmen. I said it. You said it too. Uh -huh. But I said I was black. I'm saying I'm just okay. I'm black. You know, the human race is This is part of I'm sorry, ma'am. The human race is divided into three categories. You have the mongoloid, the caucasoid, and the negroid. Okay. That's right, actually, so, that's it. Okay, so God calls his children Israelites mm -hmm. or Israel. That's what God calls us. Now, our enemies put classifications on us to get us to not connect who we are according to the Bible. That's part of repentance. Repenting, turning back from what the world says and going back to what God says. Because once we do that, that's a step into cutting off the curses. 
Because once you understand, like, man, you know what? I got to keep the Sabbath day holy. Why? Because if I don't, cursing is going to continue to come on me and my people. You start to have, you start to personalize what's going on here. Because these youngsters, you know they got something called Kia Boy? Anyone ever heard of that? Kia is a, is a brand that sells cars. Oh, K-I-A. K-I-A. I thought you said Kia Boy. Kia Boys. They steal these cars. And they ride around, joy riding, hitting other cars, hitting people, doing drive-by shootings in them. So these are curses that we are doing because we're not keeping God's law. So we were sold into slavery. Once we got off the slave ship, we were sold to our enemies. This thing happened. Did you know this is still going on today? This is still going on today. In Libya, some of it still happened right here in the United States. Some in, in Mexico. Why you think Trump want to get back in? Well, he has a lot to do with it. White supremacy. The South is still mad because they lost their slaves. They never, ever gave in to civil war. What's your name? Gwen. Gwen? My name is Jose Israel. What are we going to do to stop this from happening? What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example.